Well, welcome back everybody. You're probably thinking, what in the world's he got on his head? Well, it's my handy dandy little flashlight and I've got some issues. So I'm gonna take you through the process because I found a problem and hopefully this is gonna help somebody out there take care of an issue that I'm having with my electricals on my main helm in my main cabin, down on my flybridge, but actually in my main salon area. So let me show you what I got going on today. Okay, everybody, so let me show you what's going on. All right. This is going to be my starboard engine here. Turn this on, and, and it's sitting at right around 11, 11 and a half volts. Okay. It's a lot better than what it was earlier. Okay. Before I clean my grounds down in my hole. Now, my other one over here, what's it sitting on? Right at 12, right? 12.2. That's exactly what I've got coming out of my batteries. Now, let me show you what I found because I guarantee you if I go to my starboard engine and clean it I'll fix this too so let me show you all right so this might be a little hard to see but it's real important to show you because I guarantee you um, if you've got some engines down there in the build you're gonna have the same problem number one here's your key switch okay this wire loom right here comes from your engine right here on this side comes and then it, it will go up this wire right here the red one swirls around and goes to one side of your key you turn your key on it'll allow power to go through your key once that happens it goes up here and feeds your ignition on switch which is the switch i just showed you okay but here's my problem when i turn my ignition switch on this power on my key switch right here if you take a multimeter and test that it drops to 10.3 volts every single time couldn't figure out what it is i thought maybe it's a 12 volt issue trace my wire down to here um same thing turn the ignition on because at rest it would be sitting at 13.2 volts okay at rest as soon as you put a load to it boom it dropped to 10 and a half all right so what was the issue how did i find out what it was i knew it was either a 12 volt or the negative that was my problem so what I did was I put my multimeter on the back side here on this on one side and I took my negative and I grounded it to my ground side on my ground wires if you can see that on any one of your gauges on the port side guess what it was 10.2 now what I did was I took my ground and I grounded it to the starboard side ground because you, you've got two master switches, one's for your port, one's for your starboard. As soon as I touch the ground on this, boom, I'd get 13.2 volts, just like I should. So I knew from there it had to be down in the engine room. So let me go show you what I found down there. Okay, so down in your engine room, this is gonna be your breakers. Here's gonna be a breaker that sits in this one and this one, okay? Then this is where your electronic ignition box is at. Then you've got your starter solenoid up underneath here, okay? Now, first thing I thought was, hey, I'll check the connection on here, and one was loose. Then I just barely touched it, and it broke off. Literally, it was just corroded in two. I mean, I didn't even, <laughs> just barely turned it and just fell right off. So I'm like, hmm, that's my problem, right? Nope, that wasn't it. Because I zip tied my wires together. This is what goes on the back of that breaker. And then I checked the wire loom over here. Well, this is the exact wire loom that's coming from underneath your helm. You've got a same connector here. You got your road red wire right here that goes to your key switch. You got your black one that goes to your ground up there. So I chase it through this, and what does it go to? It goes to this blue wire right here. This dark blue right there, it's a big wire. And where does it go? Right here. Underneath that is your solenoid, your starting solenoid for your starter. Well, I took this loose, that blue wire has a connection there. It was corroded, a little rusty, cleaned it up. Put this back together with some dielectric grease and guess what i went up there to my helm 
turn my ignition switch on, and boom, I've got 13.2 volts. So anyhow, man, I hope this helps somebody because guess what? I'm going to go to my starboard engine because this is my port, and I'm going to check this, and I guarantee you I'm going to have the same issue over there, and when I clean that, I'm going to bump up my voltage by about, a, uh, about another volt on that. So what's the big deal, right? What? What's so big? Well, here's the deal. If you don't have, when this engine's running, if you've only got 10 and a half, 10.6, 10.7, that's what I was getting back to all your ignitions, your coil, your electronic ignitions, you're going to have low spark. And guess what? You're going to have spark plugs that's not going to fire correctly, and you're not going to have the output of your, your coil feeding your distributor. So that's why how important it is to clean and check all your grounds. Very, very, very important. So what I got to do, I got to order a new breaker that's going to take care of that. check my starboard engine and everything should be good and then I should be on to all right so here's my starboard side and uh, just remember your electronic ignition box it grounds through this bolt on this side so make sure you do clean that up really well and uh it actually goes through and there's a brace. Let's see if I can get it off here. And just... So there's a brace right here and a brace that goes through this one here. So make sure you clean those really good. Um, I've got some memory cloth that I use and uh, it does a really good job. It's like a sandpaper. If you don't have memory cloth, just use sandpaper and really kind of work on this where these bolts go through here and here and uh, one more right there and that way you have a really good ground this is going to be the bolt that grounds the uh, starboard engine on the blue wire coming off of the main engine harness which is right here that blue wire right in there Anyhow, it grounds right here. So we're gonna take this bolt out, clean this up really good, put some dielectric grease, and then 100% uh, of all the grounds should be taken care of on this bolt now on the 12 volt system. Now, just remember, I will be checking the 120 system, 120 volt, to make sure that uh, all the bus bars for the common are good to go and clean and nice and tight. That way we have an efficient 12 volt system and also 120, so. Anyhow, folks, um, one more thing to really pay attention to is your chokes on your engines. Um, if these are not uh, working properly, you can be going through a lot of gas just because your butterfly here is actually partially closed. Um, these do have a thermo um, choke on it that uh, as it heats up will then open this up. Now, what I've done is right here, I've just put a zip tie right here which manually keeps this in the open position 100 percent of the time now the only time you have an issue is if it gets cold outside you may have to pump this two or three times very cold at all so you should not have any trouble starting it if you do put that zip tie there but uh, it's just to make sure we have 100 percent fuel efficiency and that this engine is getting all the air that it can because basically it's an air pump so we don't want any restriction. Also, check your flame arrestor. You wanna make sure that it is very clean as well. You can see I did clean this one, but all this right here, it couldn't have a buildup of some soot, black soot. Um, just make sure it's 100% clean because basically what you want this to do is if this carburetor was to backfire, as that flame passes through this metal mesh, it'll actually cool that flame down and that flame will not actually come through there. So that's why they call it a flame arrestor. 
it arrests the flame and will not allow it to come out. So you don't have to worry about your boat catching on fire. So I still got to do a little bit more cleaning, especially on this side, but we're going to get this thing cleaned up and good to go. And uh, we should be good. Now, what's real important too is on your spark plug wires, just go through, make sure you push down on your distributor cap, make sure everything's nice and tight, has a good connection and not loose because if it's loose, then you could actually lose a little spark. And then check all your spark plugs doing the same thing. So everything is turning out extremely well and uh, we should be good to go and uh, we shouldn't have any issues. Um, something that I did do is go through and tighten up every one of your hose clamps on your boat, okay? As everybody knows, boats got about a thousand hose clamps running every which way and uh, make sure they're tight because if something's not tight or if you find a hose clamp that might be stripped off, you possibly could have a flooding event just because of the fact that you got a faulty or loose hose clamp so anyhow that's going to wrap things up um and uh, we should be good to go here and the next thing we're just going to be checking things over a little bit more going to be working on the sending units next and most importantly yes one more thing so i got to work on my engine alarm system um, i'm getting a ground somewhere and we're going to find out where it is so that's going to be a totally different video. We'll take you through that process. Now both bolt gauges are getting 13.2 volts, all fixed. And yes, I'm hot. It is another hot day out here today. So this is what I got going on for y'all. Um, any of the parts that I use, I'm going to put them down in the description. Okay. So what that's going to do is that's going to help you locate the parts that you need to do any upgrades like I'm doing. Um, this video is going to have the 20 amp breakers that I put on my main helm down here to replace my bus fuses. This is gonna have um, the 50 amp breaker as well um, to replace that. And any other parts that I'm gonna have listed here, always check my description. I'm gonna have a link there. You can be able to click on it. It's gonna take you directly to where I buy my parts. Most of the time I get them online, which is Amazon. So it's a good place. So everybody, Thanks for watching again, and uh, hey, thanks for my good friend out there that gave me some information on how to plant potatoes. I learned quite a bit, and I hope to do a lot better next spring. So hey, buddy, appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, God bless you guys, and we will see you soon with some more boat projects, and of course, I'm going to be working on my Cummins again. So we'll catch y'all later. See ya.